Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentary as Magic Stream for today, Sunday, November 25th, 2018. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese. And Arca. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend, if you were celebrating Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Hope no one else got stuck on trains for 13 hours. I got stuck in the airport for seven. I saw that. There's a lot of people that are getting uh, held up, so safe travels home to any of you who may still be on the road. We're in the air. We're stuck in an airport lobby. Or, or, or. That's right. Well, I think it's best this week uh, to cut down the banter at the beginning here, because we could go forever and ever and ever, and dive right into the spoilers... And ever and ever. Because we've got a lot. Oh my god, we have so many spoilers this week to talk about. Oh, me thinks Grandpa's doth protest too much. Well, do you have anything that we should cover before we get on into talking about these newly released Friends Forever cards from the last week or so? Spike has a crush on Rarity. <sighs> something, something shipping? What? Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Spoilers? Spoilers. Let's do it. All Start right. us off, sir. Gallus. He's uh, blue. He's a griffin. He likes doing weird stuff during face offs. If by weird stuff you mean scoring points, I think blue likes scoring points. Last I checked, blue likes scoring points. Last scoring I checked, points every are color. Weird. I mean, pink likes stealing your stuff and then throwing it at your other stuff. Does Pinky even care if he wins? I don't think so. No. I don't think. No. Pinky is just in it for fun. As evidenced by all of her mains. Pinky already won the game just by starting. Yep. So, we have a continuation of the confront to flip. Gallus does not suffer from Fluttershyitis. Unlike a certain other main in this set. Honk. Honk. And when you play a card during a face-off, you can exhaust him to score a point. Now, you, I believe, have a comment about timing here. Yes. Uh, and I actually mentioned that in uh, a comment on Bugle's original post. Bugle was the one who shared um, this spoiler along with one other as well, which we'll get to here in a moment. Thank you, Bugle. So, Gallus's boosted side says, when you play a card during a face-off, you may exhaust this card to score a point. Okay, sure. There's many cards that we might like to play during face-offs. You might want to play um, a hasty friend during a face-off to give you the extra power to win. You might want to play Belly Flop. You might want to play... Uh, Stars Fall Research. Stars Fall Research. All kinds of cards. But many of those you'll generally want to play before the outcome of a face-off is determined so that you can, you know, use that card's effect to help you better win the face-off. The problem is, if you do that before you win the face-off, you have to exhaust Gallus if you want to use his ability. And then you're losing three power off of him, assuming he's involved in the face-off, or six if you've got a stick in play. And pro tip, Gallus likes sticks. Like, a lot. So there's this neat little window in priority after the winner and loser I'm... of a face-off has been determined. I mean, he is blue and yellow. I mean, he is blue and yellow. After the winner and loser of a face-off has been determined, but before that face-off has ended. Basically, after it's been resolved, but before it's ended. And during that window, um, you can play cards. While yeah. being in a face-off. While still being in a face-off. While having already gotten whatever benefit you want out of winning the face-off. It also so, doesn't require that he be involved. So you can just be like, there's a completely unrelated face-off going on over there, and I played a hasty friend during it or something. I'm um, going to go ahead and turn him sideways. Make a point. So 
So that is a very neat little priority window that can allow uh, Gallus to still be useful in the face-off by contributing his own power and still allow you to use a lot of these immediate speed or hasty uh, type cards to eke out a little extra point advantage out of him. I think it's fair to say that Gallus is going to open up a number of different blue decks, uh, both on the aggressive and controlling side, and possibly even on the combo side in Harmony. Um, Cursed Chords, um, through his discussion this morning, even thought that there would be farming opportunities. I don't see why not. Yeah, he's starting a lot of face-offs that way. Um, but I think it's fair to say in any of those situations that he's going to lead blue in kind of a different direction than what we've seen with just the typical um, aggro lists. There's going to be more tricky things going on, and I like it. He's kind of, you know, full of surprises. I see what you did there. Kind of. Kind of. But you know what? Our next card was prepared for that. He really? was prepared for this. He was prepared I like for this. Me. That was a nice transition, Ara. Very nice. I yeah, That was kind of a crummy one. Anyway, speaking of cards that are kind of crummy and lackluster, no. Uh, Sandbar is, as the subtitle suggests, possibly part of a cycle. And unfortunately, he only has prepared, but he's a three power, three cost, one white wreck. Not a whole lot to write home about, but not too shabby. You know, in Limited, that's a perfectly fine way of getting into white. And here's another important thing to keep in mind. While we'd normally like to see two for twos, um, in a Limited environment where there are a lot of mains that confront to flip, like Gallus, like one other that we'll see here later today as well, maybe even two others, um, and with a starting problem that has a confront requirement of four, a three-power body is actually more useful. That seems relevant to me, because... Yeah. Fewer cards needed. Yeah, so in a constructed environment, sure, there's probably better things that you can do. But in a limited environment, three-power body with a confront to flip main is actually pretty good. Not sure there's a whole lot else to say here, other than that's just an adorable little smile. He brought cupcakes for everyone. Because nothing says running away from school and hiding in the woods nourishment like pastries. Sugar? Yeah. Like cupcakes and a you need sugar. cartload of pillows. Basically. Alright, let's see, what do we got next here? Uh, Pharynx Hive Patrol. The Hey look, it's one of the good changelings. Good as in abilities, or good as in not a traitor? Not a traitor, obviously. Although the abilities are pretty good here, too. Give him time. I, Technically I, he's a traitor. He's not a traitor in this screenshot, he, he's, not yet. He's the least traitorous of the traitors. Which is something to be said. Anyway, three power, three cost, three white wreck. Eccentric two, which I think is kind of the first one. time. I think that's the first time we've seen eccentric on a white card. Hmm. It was... may well be. I'll look into that while you keep going. Uh, and then continuing on the harmony kick here. Uh, when you play this card. Gain control of an opposing friend with cost less than or equal to the number of changeling characters you have. So if you're in a uh, changeling tribal deck, and the opponent has stuff, well, it's a darn shame, because their stuff's about to become your stuff. Till end of turn, or... Permanently. Hmm. You know what deck this sounds funny in? Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Queen Chrysalis Villain Challenge. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, Villain Challenge might be running a few of the a few of the new changelings. Mildly traitorous. Maybe. We'll have to see. Yeah, this is a great effect though. And it is the first time we've seen eccentric on a mono white card. The other three cards that have had white and eccentric have also been pink. 
So this is definitely branching out that keyword even further. And as a three for three body, it's not terrible. If you've got one other changeling in play, you grab something your opponent has with a cost of two or less. And you also get to slow them down from confronting a problem. Seems nice. That does seem like a nice white card. Next one. Uh, next up, we've got cheering section. Hey, I I hear that you've been like chomping at the bit to get a hold of parents. I, I found your parents. Those aren't the parents you're looking for. Those are the parents I'm looking for. The headgear here is just amazing. It's a thing. Rainbow's mom looks exactly like Rainbow. Something something genetics. Kind of does. Whatever. When I first saw this, I was like, wait, why is Rainbow there? She's got the freckles. You can tell the difference there. The three little freckles. Uh huh. Can I, barely see. Oh, there they are. There they are. Okay. Can barely see that. Anyway, five power, two cost, three blue wreck. One of your characters gets competitive two until the end of the turn at immediate speed. That's. We've seen that before, but we haven't seen the second bit before. That character gets an additional one. competitive one for each of your Pegasus characters. So if you've got a lot of Pegasi for some reason, uh, something's about to get real powerful. Yeah, and this counts characters, so your main would count as well. So if you happen to be running Fluttershy or Scootaloo or Rainbow Dash, all of those are perfectly good choices. I heard someone say something earlier today about uh, close air support, and then this card? Yeah. Wait, no, different card. That's, so, um, you yeah. know, competitive nine for 2AT. Hey, you know that night glider that always wants you to win that face-off by five power, and you're always just one power shy, and you just wish there was something? You can do this. That's, um, that's a lot of competitive. It is a lot of competitive. It's also especially interesting because it can go on a character instead of just on a friend. And most of the other temporary power boosts we've seen in blue, with the exception of like Heroic Leap or Daring Dive, uh, they can only go on friends. So like the Rainbow Connection. I think this is a little bit more relevant in terms of the main is much harder to mess with than a friend. Yeah, if you have the option of putting power on a friend or putting it on a main, you always put it on the main. Mm -hmm. Or almost always. And what's also, what's also interesting to note here is that this has a very high flip average. This thing flips for five. So we're talking a blue event that can be played at immediate speed that gives you more power in a face-off on one of your characters and flips very high. Could we maybe see this in Rainbow Dash farming? I think we're going to see this in Gallus farming, because Gallus is going to be like, hey, it says immediate, that sounds cool. I mean, you're not wrong. It's true. We'll just have to see if Gallus has cheaper stuff. Of course. All right, next card. In deference to the fact that those were, in fact, not the parents you are looking for, I think I Can found the parents you are looking for. There we go. There's the parents I'm looking for. So accident. Hmm? No, go ahead. So accident the pair farm immediate banish a troublemaker from your discard pile to give a troublemaker here plus two power until the end of the turn. It's uh, continuing on that uh, two color plus two not color or two wild theme that we've seen with a mm, I... five for the opponent to confront. I smell a cycle. Cycle? Hmm. Maybe just a set of common wrecks, maybe. A bit cyclic. Cyclical? Nah. The ability is interesting, but I think what's more relevant here is the fact that this is, very much like the yellow problem we saw earlier, uh, an orange problem that only has four confront requirement for you. Four is kind of a magic number for orange already because there's a lot of characters that enter play having four power. There's a lot of 
synergy that orange has with things at four or more power. And being able to get just a single character to pretty reliably confront this problem is not bad. Hmm. Cheese, thoughts? I think it has art. <laughs> Yeah, it does. No. Yeah. It, it, it has art, yes. It has appropriate art. I mean, you are banishing troublemakers. Because these two seem to cause a lot of problems. <laughs> no, I see what you're doing there. Anyway. So, I do wish that it said banish a card, but. So I uh, hear that you like four power orange friends. I mean, yeah, I like four power orange friends. How about this four power orange friend? It's Garble, let's race. And he comes with competitive four. Which. Yikes. It's extreme. That's I mean, a lot of competitive. This card has eight power and a face off. I mean. Oh, look, Garble's got some issues, okay? Like yeah. wanting. Wanting to race like right now, let's let's go. And just in case that wasn't enough, we've got an immediate ability to exhaust this card to give a troublemaker here competitive four until the end of the turn. So he's also sitting there going, "Hey, you over there, get hype." Yeah, this is interesting. Um... Because this is a card that can very easily switch from playing an aggressive role to playing a controlling role without really having to do anything. If you're trying to beat up your own troublemakers, if you're trying to use this in some kind of farming or just have some epics there or some extra point gain, well, you've got a pretty good body. And if your opponent happens to use a lot of tricks or is just trying to break through before you can, well, they're going to need to contend with an extra four power. I'm going to go ahead and raise that wall right up. That's not bad. And as an uncommon, I could see something like that being pretty valuable in a limited environment when removal is a little less common. I mean, you always have Appaloosa, but... That's true. For now. Eventually For now. you won't. And that's not to say anything about the fact that I'm going to blow it up at immediate speed. Because no, of, course of course I am. Not. Of course you will. And then Garble's going to eat a pumpkin. So many pumpkins being tossed. I predict a return of pumpkins. Next card. Uh, well, at this point, I'd like to do some shenanigans and switch us to a scene where we have the Pillarman theme going on cheese out and switch to Sunambula. The first of the pillars. You can just imagine the Pillarman theme going. We can probably link it in the sidebar. Eh, too much effort. Godot, I know you're watching. Get us the, uh, get us the Pillarman theme, please. <laughs> there we go. See, there he is. Okay. Uh, so three power, three cost, four wreck. And it's got the four wreck for a reason. Opponents play with their hands revealed. So if she has binocular, binoculars? The interesting part of binoculars. But it gets better. When this card enters play, name a card type. You do this after their hand is revealed so you can see what they've got in hand. And then when they draw a card with that type, you get to draw a card too. You drew this, I drew this. That is kind of what it feels like. Yeah, this is interesting because where, Benuna, where uh, Balloon Oculars only draws you cards when the opponent draws events, Sonambula lets you customize your draw trigger, I guess, for lack of a better term, 
to whatever you think your opponent is most likely to be playing. Your opponent's playing a farming deck? Cool, name Troublemakers. Your opponent's playing Hyper Aggro? Keep it as friends. Can I go ahead and name friends? Your opponent's playing Sweetie Bell or playing Rarity in Continentals? Well... Uh, you should well, name friends. Well, first off, I call Judge because what's this card you're doing? You're running around with here. Next year's Continentals. Okay, maybe. Name events or resources, you can do that too. And a three power body for three cost? That's not terribly costed for this effect. Balloon Oculars is a resource that just sits at your home and requires two colors. Sun Ideal requires a steeper pink requirement, but as we all know, four pink requirement means basically nothing. I heard, you know, you want to talk shells. about shells? Something, something, shells. There's so many things we can do with shells. Yeah. I think there's a lot of pink decks that will consider running at least a couple copies of her. And I appreciate this art. He just looks mean here. She is filled with determination. That was awful. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, um, let's see. What do we got next here? How about a... No, Star Swirl the Builded. Pillar the, of... The Builded? Yes, the Builded. Built out of shells. Star Swirl the <laughs> Bearded. Pillar of Sorcery. Purple, obviously. Four power, four cost, two purple wreck. And... Well, that's a wall of text there. As is appropriate I've for a unicorn more. of his stature. I've seen longer. Um, Go for it. Yeah, so at the start of your turn, reel the top three cards of your deck, put one in your hand, the rest on the top or bottom of your deck in any order. And then, also, if you would put a flipped event on the bottom of your deck, you may exhaust this card to put that event into your hand instead. So we've got two separate abilities here. First is basically just uh, instead of, um, well, so you draw your card for turn. Uh, oh, sorry, first you look at the top three cards of your deck, pick one, then draw your, tar your card for turn. Mm. So you're basically get getting an extra card. Draw. Ah, yes. Except it's not draw, so poor Sonambula is sitting there going. Yes, indeed. Oh, I did, well, we'll come back to Sonambula in a second. Yeah. But but. And then he also has Twilight ability from Premiere. Uh, he has a much more restricted version of Twilight's yes. ability from he, Premiere. Because yes, we saw what exhaust. happened the last time we tried to use Twilight's ability from Premiere. That's because she was also studious. I mean, it's both. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, it is extra card draw, essentially. So this is potentially two extra cards per turn for no cost. Well, after you pay the initial four, which is kind of steep, but yeah. But if you're if you're doing something where you're trying to play chaos tricks, this might be up your alley. It's basically a free Selena Blue. Yes. At the start of your turn, uh, kind of. You can't can put, put on cards. Bottom. Yeah, you, you can't put cards that are already in your hand back on top. You can only mess with things that are already on top of your deck. Yeah. Um, Animoy asks, does BRB want this? So, nope. No. Um, though there is one appealing aspect to this card for BRB, and that is that two in its requirement. That's pretty nice. Yeah. But, but otherwise, BRB already has a lot of card draw. and So much card draw. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't think this even has a place for consideration in BRB. Nothing about this is that interesting. No, it, it's a cool control effect, but it's an entirely different style of control deck. It doesn't say on enters play on it anywhere. This is going to be more at home, in my opinion, in something that's going to look more like what we saw with VBOT back in the day. A very event-heavy, almost toolbox-style kind of control deck um, that's just going to be chock-full of all kinds of disruptive events and a couple friends to help you get extra value.
Yeah. Cursed Chords is relatively certain he also goes in this unicorn aggro deck that he is theory crafting, and I can see that working. Also, it's yeah. appropriate it's appropriate to note that Star Swirl the Bearded will in fact allow you to exhaust himself to give you Star Swirl research back. So flavor win. Other than not having flavor text. <laughs> where, where are you going to put flavor text on this there's, card? See, that, at the end of that last little, line, there, there's the little blank space. You want, you want to make right the... Right in there. <laughs> text, like, four point, and you have to get a microscope out to read it? Yeah, sure, why not? We've seen wackier text on cards before. What, like the donut steel on the King Sombra main? I mean, that one, but I was more thinking back where you began. We'll just put a chat bubble in the art right there. It's fine. Sure. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Back, back to Sonambula for one quick second, if you don't mind. Uh-huh. Are, are, we, are we back on uh -huh. Sonambula? Okay, cool. Uh, I want to put this card in pile. No, not allowed. Moving on. But I want to put it in pile. <laughs> not allowed. Moving on. That sounds hilarious. I mean, that does Why? actually sound kind of Why hilarious. Why does it sound hilarious? Because every time that you and your opponent are reshuffling your hands into your decks, if you have a Sonambula in play, you're probably drawing a hand that's at least twice as large as your opponent's. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I would. Not, I'm sorry, not twice as large. Half again as large. Also, you get to see everything they have. Yeah. <laughs> At least until she eats a pumpkin. Yeah, sure. But she'll see it coming. Sonambula will never not see the pumpkin coming. True. Mm, except for Desert Road. Mm. Anyway. Okay, uh, let's see. Yes. Alright, let's talk about your shiny new Flash Magnus, Pillar of Bravery. Forget everything else, let's just go straight to this text in the text box here. Swift, Agile, when you move this card, you may pay one to frighten a friend. How important is that pay one? Very. Incredibly. Like, it doubles the cost. It turns him from a just complete and utter wrecking ball into, okay, that's still pretty dangerous, but at least you have a tiny chance. Something, something, Thunderlane Dust. I, I think he passes the Thunderlane test. Is this card worth 4 AT in a blue deck? I mean, there's always going to be removal, but this is something that's definitely going to draw it, and if it doesn't get answered, yeah, this is not bad. Um, I'm not sure what you're on about with not bad. This is one of those things that this demands a near immediate answer. You need to address this within a turn of it hitting the field or you are just going to have a bad time. Oh, definitely within a turn. I'm not arguing with that. Um, if you let the opponent take another ready phase after this card is in play uh, and get action tokens back, it's going to be bad times. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have compared this to uh, Rainbow Dash Pirate Pony. And that is a somewhat fair comparison, in that both of them move and frighten cards. But Pirate Pony had a couple things holding her back. First off, she was small. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because it means that she can't take eat pumpkins. Sure. But it does mean that just moving her on her own was generally not a very aggressive play. Right. She was only a two-power body, which you're breaking even action tokens to cost. Sure. Right. Pirate Pony was not swift, uh, the Werefrog was asking in chat, um, and also could not move herself at immediate speed. You needed to use some other form of movement. So generally, you saw her just kind of do things with Scootaloo. And sure, that makes sense. Scootaloo can move her up at the end of the turn. Flash Magnus, on the other hand... He is a self-motivated pony who doesn't sit around and wait for things to happen. Don't need no main. Uh, 
And he's a big boy. That four power, that's going to do things. Remember, we've seen at least three problems so far this set that have a confront requirement of four. Now, given two of them are in different colors, but still. Mm, there's probably something going on there. Yeah. It also means that your opponent needs to watch your AT total and consider their moves very carefully, because any, literally any friend that can be frightened is potentially a liability. Yeah, it's possible. Also, synergies with Torch. This is this is a huge thing with Torch, by the way. Torch says at the end of your turn, frighten a friend. At the start of your turn, each opponent retires a frightened friend or dismiss a frightened friend, something like that. Yeah. Torch and Flash Magnus means, cool, in your last priority window, I'm going to do this. Hmm, you can't rally that card. That's too bad. It's gone. It's terrible. It's really actually kind of funny considering that the two of them are just in a giant fight. Now they're best buddies. Time Maybe. heals all wounds. Something like that. Anyway, I've gushed about that card long enough. Time to gush about another card! Eh. Uh, which card? Princess Caden's Family Matters. Hey look, it's the other half of the uh, tricolor. And... All this four princesses. Is... Don't you Almost dare! Perfect. Don't you dare say anything about devil. Yes, it it has one problem, which is that Devil Babby is in the art. It's almost perfect. No, it has one problem, which is to a minimum of one. <laughs> we Devil Babby. Devil Babby's more important than the to a minimum. I don't care that your breezies now cost one. Because it I is the mean. it is it is the fourth and final permanent princess. <laughs> that, does that appease you, Bugle? She is not yet with the title of princess. So haven't they used Princess Flurry Heart? No, they used Baby Flurry Heart. I mean, on cards. I don't remember if she has the royalty trait or not. And I can't be bothered to look. Let's talk about this one instead. This one's much more interesting. It's the first Cadence card that's not terrible? I believe that would be an accurate assessment. Yeah. Let's see. No, so, wait. No, wait. Wait. We had the, actually, hasty, there we was... had the hasty pink Cadence Sorry, in yeah. Hollings. So we had the hasty pink Cadence. We also had the one that you exhausted to get back something of the same name. Correct. Everlasting Love. Okay, that was it. Okay. Yeah, the pink-white cadence. Eh, whatever. This one's better. I mean, it is. So your friends cost less. Opponents have to pay more to play events. And every time your opponent plays a card, you get to draw a card. You want to know how to match m momentum or gain momentum in this game? That's how you do it. Play a that right there. Mix? I mean, have a friend that is almost Changeling Mimics. I don't know. I think she's a Changeling. Because that second ability looks awful Mimixy. So there's a lot of crazy things that can be done in these colors, right? Um, and a lot of crazy things that can be done with these abilities. Paying less to play friends means that all of a sudden your Angel Wings cost one and creates a modifier that exists after Cadence does, which means it applies after Cadence does, and Angel Wings does not have a minimum. So if you play an Angel Wings for one AT into a friend that costs three AT, well, you're spending one AT to get... Something you know, like five power worth of... Well, five power if you're going with a Spitfire uh, drilling it in, but what if you go with a Spitfire wing leader instead? Or how about a pharynx? A pharynx? Or a sunambula? A little, little bit more power. I don't so, know. Uh, I'm sure we can do better than that. Oh, yeah. Aggressively speaking, there's a lot that you can do with this card. Um, 
one of the stupidest things that I hope comes up at some point in Limited. I don't know how it ever would. But I hope we get two players each with a cadence. Because that is absolutely ridiculous. Why? Because they just look at each <laughs> other and go... Your... <laughs> I play a card. Well, I play a, a card. Card. All my events cost too much. I can't... Ugh! That sounds awful. So you should make sure that you have a pumpkin. Just for I want, I want the mirror match of Cadence and Sonambula. And just, like, see who can get through their deck faster by the opponent doing stuff. Yeah, Beagle's got another one there. Cadence into Angel Wings into Tender Taps. That's pretty big value. Yeah, but who's Tender Taps bringing back? We need to know. Another Angel Wings, clearly. There we go. So actually, what about what about Cadence into Angel Wings, retire Angel Wings to Soren, which is already in play. Tender Taps bring back the Angel Wings, retire to Soren again. All right, I, I think you're having too much fun here. I'm having a good old time. Yeah, see, look, Godot's got it. Pumpkin, oh, there we go. Yes, it is Food Fight, which is dismiss a friend with three or more power. An opponent friend? An opposing friend? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, unfortunately, that pumpkin's going to cost you four. And also give you a replacement, or give your opponent a replacement draw. Mm. I don't know, I think my preference here would be Drinking duo, and then Cadence is going to uh, take a short flight. Drinking duo is going to be a very impactful card because it's one of the best answers to both of the alicorns that we've seen so far. And by the way, the more we see cards like Cadence or Twilight or Flash Magnus or any of these just absolutely gigantic threats. The more there's this little deck that likes looking in its discard pile and going, yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, I'll take that one. Nah, yeah, sure, we'll take that one too. Hmm. It's coming. Uh, what do we have next? I think we've had... Uh, Durgan? Oh, oh, yeah. Dragons. Smolder. She's adorable. Look at how annoyed she is. She looks happy. I don't know. She looks pretty annoyed there. Uh, continuing with the confront to flip theme. Because there's a problem in this set that's like, hey, confront to flip. That's cool, right? And on her boosted side, there's some... That's a modifier. At the start of the face-off, you may exhaust this card to have an opponent discard a card. If they do, one of your cards involved in the face-off gets plus X power until the end of the face-off, where that's equal to the discarded card's power. So this is not only helping you out in a face-off, it's making them discard stuff out of their hand. Now, they do get the choice of what to discard, so they do have a little bit of agency here, but they still have to discard something. And as much as people love talking about Fire of Friendship, and don't get me wrong, I love talking about Fire of Friendship, you can only run three of those cards in your deck. Wait, really? Yeah, pro tip. Maybe they will notice. And so as the Werefrog noted, there is a very interesting decision that the a challenger has to make here is do they discard the thing with low power and have a better chance at the face-off or do they discard the thing with high power and save some potentially more interesting card for later decisions decisions it is a tricky decision if you're going to do repeatable discard this is about one of the easiest triggers to have for that you don't have to start the face-off, the opponent doesn't have to start the face-off, Smolder doesn't have to be involved, it doesn't have to be a problem face-off, any face-off. Seems good. Yeah. 
Over time, it's certainly possible for Smolder to just tear your opponent's hand apart, assuming they're leaving a hand there for you to play with and not just trying to play out. Yeah. But surprise, surprise, it's yet another main that, eh, depending on how you look at it, might like playing with stick. Sure, you're probably not going to win the Frighten if Smolder's exhausted. But on the plus side, you're taking something out of their opponent's hand. I don't know. I don't. I don't think Stick has an incredible utility in a Smolder deck. But let's talk about Troublemakers for a moment here with this thing. Not Appaloosa. Uh, Apple. Whatever that is. Apple. Oh gosh. The thing. The premier thing. The thing that's normally rated zero. What Sweet Apple Acres? Which... Sweet Apple Acres. Okay. That one. Not Appaloosa. And Sweet Apple Acres costs two to play. Does it only cost one to use? I thought it cost more than that to use. It costs Maybe not. one to use. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but Steph yeah, also gets you something else out of it. Yeah, just use it with Applejack's Worst Nightmare. That's true. Starting face-offs are very relevant. Yeah. There's a chance Smolder can end up winning. Just always run Applejack's Worst Nightmare. <laughs> It's fine. Don't worry <laughs> sure. about it. All right, whatever. No, you're gonna I can, sit there. I can dream. I can dream. No, you're gonna sit there and run the pie parents and st start giving her stubborn. I mean, maybe. I might. Okay. Um. So Smolder was spoiled by whom this morning? Uh, this was spoiled on Meticulous Talks, along with I think one other card, and then. <laughs> uh, the world's biggest Trixie fan but we'll talk about that when we get to that the world's biggest Trixie fan is currently sleeping off his mistake teehee uh, but let's look at one of the other cards that they spoiled which is Yona student of friendship uh, here we have Another Student of Friendship card, which is also 3 power and also 3 cost and also 1 rec. Uh, this ability, though, looks a little bit more interesting. When this card enters play, you may turn a Troublemaker face down. Not one of your Troublemakers, either. Just a Troublemaker. Yeah, can be one of yours. Can also be one of your opponents. Also, that face is the exact face I make when I play this card on my opponent's Starlight Glimmer Chrono Trigger that's about to pop. Literally that Banish face. all the cards. Yes. Well, <laughs> permanently. The, I, that face right there. You thought you were one? It kind of looks like the awesome face. It does. I wonder if that was intentional. I don't know. It's pretty good, though. Again, you know, we've got this three-cost, three-power body. And With only one requirement. Relevant ability. Very relevant ability. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Not, I mean, even, not even location restricted. I would prefer dismissal, but this is a yellow card, cheese. Sorry. It's more yellow, the, got, uh, yellow got dismissed troublemakers. Yeah, eh. Yellow has had dismissed troublemakers before. Eh. It's still pretty good. It also means that you can do some kind of silly things, like if you're running Exposed Inequality, you can turn that face down to get another use out of it. Getting multiple shots out of some of your annoying troublemakers. Mm-hmm. Or, and this is this is a one I like, it's, oh, you're, you're setting up to beat up my troublemaker, well, I'm just going to go ahead and turn that face down, and then we're going to have a single problem face-off. Yep. And the next turn, the Troublemaker comes back. Sure, ah. why not? Also, Animoy, if you were asking, this card goes in Burb. See that enter play text right there? That, that it goes doesn't in go in. It can't even get the... Wait, I guess it can get this into play, but why? It, it, it's, it's yellow. Goes in, in, enters play, does things, it goes no. in Burb. That's how that works, no. right? No. No? No. I thought that was how that worked. No. Well, what else have you been lying to me about? Uh, 
Uh, I don't have a snappy comeback ready for that. Fair enough. Let's just, just go to the next card. Just because it says draw a card doesn't mean it goes in pile. Yes, the Werefrog BRB stands for Be Right Back, just like in internet slang, because it's a deck that causes its friends to leave play and then re-enter play, triggering their abilities again. Uh, next card. And this this is a card which has Trixie on it. And should have been spoiled by Hithrock earlier this morning. But was not. I mean, it was. Shame. Shame. But, detention. Four power, two cost, three purple wreck. Put an opposing friend on top of its owner's deck. Note that although this costs more than nap cakes, it's not restricted on the power. Just an opposing friend, top of its owner's deck. Deal with it. Now it is main phase timing. Which is Terrible. just a little better. But if that friend's cost is less than or equal to the number of unicorn characters you have, the cost goes down by one. Or actually you just straight up gain an action token. Correct. So let us assume you have a smattering of unicorn characters, one of whom might be Trixie Hattrick, who like, we saw earlier. Like about 40 unicorn tokens? Sure, something like that. And we played attention for 1 AT, because a unicorn entered play, and we pay one less to play our next event. We put an opposing friend on top of its owner's deck. And then we gain that 1 AT back, but of course we're also playing bodyguards, because of course we are which means we just had another unicorn friend enter play, which means our next event costs less. Aww, oh, the dream. This is silly. Bodyguards is a silly card. Bodyguards is a silly card. A little bit. Jeez, what do you think? We've seen some purple, like, put a friend on top of its owner's deck before, but it's been really expensive. Yeah, it's been three, generally? I don't think, well, we don't have any pure purple immediate unconditional. I think this is the first one of those. Uh, the closest we have to that is Starlight or uh, Sunset Shimmer Clever Calculator. Yeah. yeah. She was three cost or four cost? Three cost. Three cost, yeah. Yeah, but she's generally be at three cost. But she's also a friend. Yeah. But this is interesting. Um, I would like more immediate put on top, but not everything has to be immediate. Also, is this a Breakfast Club reference? Maybe? N no, this is How Are You Doing, Fellow Kids reference. Oh. Okay, sure. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So I think that was the end of the Meticulous Talk spoilers. Mm -hmm. I believe the next thing we've got is Drada's spoilers. Uh, and first off, we have this card here, which I am going to nickname right now Tiny Trader. Because she's tiny and also she's a traitor. She's a bug. She's a traitor. Traitor to the hive. Uh, yet another confront to flip main. Go figure. Uh, while you have a friend with higher power than its cost, this card has plus two power. So that's a five power main if you've got a friend. Or, I don't know, a token. Because tokens' costs are always zero. And then at immediate speed, you can pay three to double this card's power until the end of the turn. And that doesn't have a cost associated with it other than the action token, so if you have the tokens, you can do that multiple times. So Seems good. The tiny trader is um, not so tiny anymore. I mean, she gets small. So let's talk briefly here about dependent modifiers. <laughs> Very oh. briefly. Here we go. Everyone in school was taught the order of operations for math, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 
You always do your multiplication and division before your addition and subtraction. Well, ponies weren't taught that way. Ponies do things the opposite way. So you always add things or subtract things before you multiply anything. So let's say you have an Ocellus. And let's say you have a token friend in play. And cool, Ocellus gets plus two power. So now she's at five. And then you pay three to double this card's power until the end of the turn. Well, now she's at ten. That grand pause. Why isn't she at eight? Did you just do that? I... I think you just did. I think you just did that. Um, then let's say that later, after I've doubled her power, I play something that gives her plus two. Join the herd. Sure, we'll play join the herd. Does her power go to 12? No, her power goes to 14, I believe. Correct, because the additive modifiers are always applied before the multiplicative ones. So even if Ocellus gets more power after you've used her double this card's power until the end of the turn ability, whatever other additive or negative power she gets will be doubled as well. So or, there's, some, there's some stuff going on there. Or if, if the, her controller has a lot of tokens to spend, quadrupled. Or more. I would like to see uh, how high Ocellus can get in pre-release. So if anyone has the dice required to show Ocellus's power and you play her in a pre-release event, um, send us a photo. Sounds scary. Does sound scary. But yeah, Ocellus is an interesting white main, definitely very aggressive, kind of a nice twist on things from what we saw with Octavia. Yes. Yeah. So now, okay. earlier in the chat, I heard a few complaints about, wait, this is Ocellus, I'm Russell because Ocellus should be purple. Uh, she just has to be white in order to fulfill the Changeling Tribe's requirement. You know, it would be kind of sad if they didn't have a main. Yeah. And so here we have 334. When this card enters play, just put an opposing friend on top of its owner's deck. Okay. No, no restrictions, just that thing. That's good. Your deck, top. Bye bye. There it goes. Also, it's in purple. And a more. This I thing would... still doesn't go in verb because you have Tempest and Grubber. But if you didn't have exactly. Tempest and Grubber, you would run this say. card. <laughs> I was about to say that it does, in fact, already go in verb because verb already has something. Correct. But if you didn't, this would go there. Por que no los dos? Because Burb is already strapped for spots like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, there's no room for more of this. I think we're... Uh, I've run versions of Burb that only run two Tempest and Grubbers. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things that you adjust for the meta. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Ocellus, however, is a nice way to get that effect just in mono purple and just off of a friend. This means that if you don't want to play purple pink enters play triggers and you want to do like purple white enters play triggers or things along those lines, you can totally do that. Yeah. This is kind also, of an interesting card. She's a changeling. She is a changeling. She's also a traitor to the hive. I like to think that Ocellus just has a picture of her card in that book that she's showing to Yona, and Yona is like seeing and through the fourth wall, and oh god, I can see forever. And Gallus is like, hey, my card's pretty good. This is my headcanon for that scene. <laughs> Evidently, Ocellus was in fact the only one who paid attention during class. Smolder's got her hands on her hips there. I'm not sure what to make of that. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Let's say our first troublemaker. Ooh, there are in fact troublemakers in this set. And five power, zero bonus. Okay, sure. This card can't be challenged except by two or more characters. Huh. Seems acceptable. This is really good limited, actually. But... That seems like you can't just run your main up into the uh, Malwarf and be like, Hey you, come here. It's just going to be like, no. You're too tiny. And just so, uh, just play this against AJ Farm and uh, then somehow make it epic. I don't know. Yeah, that's the real problem is that they'll sit there and be like, no, we'll just unique this violation, and then it goes away. Yeah, this is about as close as we'll get to Jet Set and Upper Crusting Core right now. Uh, so the it's worth noting here that there, uh, if there is nothing that can start a challenge against this if you don't meet the requirements. So, for example, you can't uh, changeling can change to start a face-off against this. It just, no, it doesn't work because it just cannot be challenged unless it's got enough characters there. And so there's a bunch of old cards in uh, Canterlot Knights, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Princess Celestia Protector of Equestria just straight up doesn't work on this. Malworth greater than Princess Celestia. Confirmed. Makes sense. Correct. Uh, let's see, I think that's um, the last of the spoilers that Drada previewed earlier today. Man, it only took us an hour to get through everything. Yeah. It'd be a darn shame if we had to lump some more on there, huh? What? Lump more spoilers? I heard more spoilers! I heard... This card is a very angry griffin. Why is he so angry? Because he just wants his friends to stop fighting. And they wouldn't listen to it. When it was just like, please. So he's like, hey. And it turns out when you yell that loud, you frighten some things. So five power, one cost, three blue wreck. Frighten a friend with two or less power. That's kind of a napcakes equivalent to some bizarre form. But with, sure. Har but with Harmony Griffin, uh you get to have a second crack because if this thing is in your discard pile and you play a griffin friend, you can banish this thing out of your discard pile and frighten something. And that can also happen at immediate speed if you're messing around with a hasty griffin. Now, let's keep in mind, this does not play the card from your discard pile. Correct. It banishes it from the discard pile. This is a trigger that fires out of the discard pile. Correct. Yep. But still, this is a one cost, three wreck, five power event at immediate speed that frightens and then later can frighten for free, also potentially at immediate speed. That's and it also good. shows us yet more harmony traits on events, which is nice. Yeah, this card is exceptionally good. Blue often struggles to include removal in its deck because it wants to be aggressive a lot of the time, and it doesn't want to give up space for it. Well, now you've basically added another free three card slots because you if you're running a place out of this card. Yeah, you effectively get more shots out of the thing, which is great. Yeah, and this is common, by the way. So if you're looking for a tribe that may have some good utility in Limited, might probably a decent place to look. Might want to check out the Griffins. Okay. Okay, that's a nice, that's a nice new addition to spoilers. I like it. 
But there's something that's kind of bugging me here, Aura. What, the fact that we've seen all these traitorous changelings? That bugs me too. Hey look, it's the one non-traitorous changeling. It's our queen. In very uncharacteristic colors, even. She's been white before. The pink yeah. is a little new. I mean, to some degree. Strictly speaking, she's been all colors. Potentially. Uh, so, right off the bat, there's a big zero up there in the corner, and that's um, a little concerning, but we'll, we'll get to that later. There's also <laughs> a bit. Yeah, don't so, don't don't spoil it in chat, Bugle. I know I know you're already thinking of it. Yeah, five costs, three pink, three white. As this card enters play, banish an opposing friend. All right, our, I'm getting on board with this. And then this card enters play as a copy of that friend. Hmm. So anything our opponent has permanently banished. Yes, we did already see Chrissy on uh, Kittens. That's true. Anything the opponent has, gone. We get that friend. Note that this does not have that friend's abilities like Xerox does. No, it's just a copy of that friend. That means it's going to have power... It's going to have color. It's going to have cost. Bear in mind, this is going to be really strange when you're copying a card and you see this five that's printed on Queen Chrysalis, but you're like, no, her cost is not five. Her cost is, what's that thing I banished? Two. Yeah. But that zero... It's, it's a real shame when you flip it. Yeah, that's what the one major issue with this card. Like, it's everything else about this card is amazing. It's got a picture of our queen on it, and that's as far as I'm going. Yeah, that zero is unfortunate. Confused. But if Queen Chrysalis knows how to do anything, it's to turn what looks like a, a dour situation to her advantage. So what can we do about this? Run it anyway, because our queen. I mean, you're not wrong. Don't flip it. Uh, do you have the uh, pony card thing set up with chat here? Uh-huh. Oh, what's, that la what's that last mode say? Oh. Huh, how about that? Because their uh, printed power is zero. You can just uh, go ahead and pull her out of the discard. That's even cheaper than that other thing. And I'm pretty sure there's some other things that sit there and say stuff about being able to retrieve sufficiently small things out of your discard pile. I think most uh, of those are based on cost. Off Lombe, or Kitchen Off Lombe. Oh. Uh, that is only with a printed cost of one, not one or less, I believe. Wow. I am pretty certain. That's a darn shame. I will check. One power. Oh. Terrible. Boo. Whatever. Running this card anyway. No, no, yeah, yeah. no redeeming. Our queen is going to remain evil forever. By evil, I mean good. Now, as good as dumb. this card has as text, as we know, as text is the only thing that is faster than Desert Road. Text? As Just abilities. As, okay. Now, that's not going to stop her from losing whatever abilities she copies for the end of the turn. But it is important to note that she'll still get to choose a friend. It's also important to note that this is as this card enters play, not as you play this card, which means, going back to beating the old horse... Does not go in burb. Could go in burb. I could see this in burb. Uh, I actually could, 
but no, I, I can't see this in verb. But that probably wasn't the point you wanted to make. No, that was kind of the point I wanted to make. I might not necessarily see this in. Well, yeah, I could. I could still end up seeing this in verb. There's. I mean, consider Hithrock's version of uh, Portal that runs bodyguards because it likes white cards in there too. Can you name another friend that Burb runs that is as impactful as Queen Chrysalis would be? Well, it's almost as good as the Sky Star. But the Sky Star, of uh, course, no, I disagree because you can portal the Sky Star. You can portal this too. Yeah. Oh, does that actually work? Hmm. Yes. yes. Ah, that is, yes, that is interesting because I think these have always been as you play this card before, haven't they? Or have no, we... Octavia. Uh, no, no, Xerox Harsh... enters play. Harsh Judge. They've, they've been as this card enters play. Interesting. Now this this thing could definitely go in a version of a portal deck that splashes white. Eh, I don't know. I still don't really like it, but I guess. Well, then just run it in changelings, because you're already running white and yellow, and yeah, then just run find the music in you. But she's then, pink. Huh? But she's pink. Oh, oh no! I'll have to reanimate her with my one cost song. Oh no! It is oh no. Anyway, Cream Chrysalis is a really good card. Especially because it's got a picture of our queen on it. Who is, as of course, best queen. Also, the flavor text is... Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bugle, I bet she probably would fit in that pink-yellow-white deck. I bet that deck would enjoy it quite a bit. Whew! That was a lot of spoilers. Guess Just what? getting There's us more... prepared for the for slog fest. The slog fest? Yeah. Slog fest. Do we have a date announced for this yet? Uh, 2018. Hopefully it's not 2019. Hopefully it's not 2019. <laughs> Soon, TM. Uh, let's see, I think we... I think we have this earmarked for the 9th, which is, I believe, the first Sunday following pre-release. Yes, the Sunday of pre-release weekend. There may be some pre-releases that are still going on. Well, that, uh, sounds, that's... Like, that sounds like oh, yeah, a personal that problem. Or a problem with scheduling at your store. So in case you haven't heard... Pre-release is slated for the 7th, although individual stores may choose to move this around as they see fit. And many probably will because of Ultimate Masters. There is a Magic pre-release happening on the same weekend. Hey, it wouldn't be a Pony pre-release if it wasn't the same weekend as a Magic pre-release. This has happened like the last four times. Yeah, I don't know how that keeps happening. It's kind of fascinating, actually. It's tradition at this point. Exactly. This is actually all just a secret ploy to increase the visibility of the card game by putting it around other CCG players. I approve. I see. Okay, Starlight. Can't exhaust myself to gain an action token. Yes. So, you were saying, Ara. Huh? You were saying... Saying I was exhausting myself to gain an action token. No, no, no. I know. I mean pre-release. Yeah. It's on the uh, 7th. should uh, talk to your stores about acquiring the retail kit and such. Yep. The Sunday of that weekend, though, I believe is what we currently have planned for the Slogfest. If you haven't seen the Slogfest before... Um, well, my advice here would be Bring a snack. Bring a snack and a drink. Several snacks, in fact. Because those tend to run long. Because we're going to go over every single card in the set. 
Do we know how many cards are in the set yet? We do not. The Cadence and Twilight being where they are suggests it's about 140 cards. Same size as Sequestria. And we'll be going through each one and giving our ratings as to that card's impactfulness in any individual game. Sequ uh, it's not Sequestria. Friends Forever is obviously going to have a big impact on the metagame in terms of what sort of decks and archetypes are out there. But rather than trying to predict which cards are going to see play and which cards aren't, we like to give our ratings as for which cards are going to have an impact when you play them or in the game when you play them. So you can have an idea of what to fill your decks with. Friends. Cards. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Lots of pumpkins. Ponies. Events. But More some events. Of, but like, half of the things in this set aren't ponies. No, or bugs. You know, whatever. Bugs are griffins or dragons every creature every creature yes 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 anyway occasional yak and hippogriff i think that's gonna about wrap up our discussion for spoilers for today we'd like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons on patreon thank you so much for your regular support if you aren't currently a patron you enjoy what we do please consider donating doing so enables us to continue making content like this if you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, or if you're just interested in hearing about what we're working on for the future, there are many ways you can stay in contact. We have our Patreon, as mentioned previously, but you can also reach us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. And patrons at or above the $5 per month level also get access to our Slack channel, where you can chat live with us any day, any time. Pretty much any time. Someone Look. will respond. Look, I'm trying to get my sleep schedule back in one piece. Trying does not equate to success. And failing miserably, yes, I know. Yes, exactly. If you are looking to watch any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them in our YouTube channel linked in the sidebar. And please make sure to subscribe while you're there so you can help us get closer to a channel URL that makes some amount of sense. We're very close. A few more YouTube subscribers, and we can actually have youtube.com slash commentary as magic. I think there's something else in front of that, but yeah. The channel or whatever. User, something like that. With all that said, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary is Magic. I am, as always, Grandpa's. Big Cheese. And our cat, otherwise known as our queen's biggest fan. We'll see you all probably in a week. Bye. Pretty sure, pretty sure it's going to be in a week. Bye-bye.